Okay, hi brothers and sisters, this is Eric. Thank you for joining me. So I was actually on this live show of this other watchman called On Point Preparedness. I don't know how many of you have heard of this channel before, but apparently it's a fairly large channel. Now I'm not endorsing his channel or any of his teachings, but the reason why I mentioned that, okay, is because while I was on the show earlier, I actually was reading the comments, okay, on the live show. So there were quite a number of them who actually used the argument that it is going to be a post-tribulation rapture because of, you know, the word day of the Lord, right? And so I, I decided to clear this once and for all. Now, I've actually mentioned this in the past before, but there is a new understanding that I would like to add to the day of the Lord that I have not previously talked about, okay? So the confusing thing is that in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, it is actually a rapture passage. I mean, just like Second Thessalonians, right? So if First and Second Thessalonians is actually about the rapture, about the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, why then is the word day of the Lord used in 1 Thessalonians 5? Because it says, For the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So why would the description of the day of the Lord being a reference to the second coming be used in a rapture passage? And that is a good question. It is a valid question. And the answer is this, that there is no contradiction at all because the day of the Lord is a 1,000 year event. Okay, it is going to last for 1,000 years. That is how long the duration is going to be for the day of the Lord. How do I know this? Because it is not up to speculation because the Bible defines the Bible. Scripture defines Scripture. Doesn't the Bible tell us that for a day to the Lord is as a thousand years and vice versa? So a day to the Lord is a thousand years, right? A day is as a thousand years. That is the duration of, the day, of a day according to the Lord. And the Bible tells us that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So in other words, there are three markers in this 1,000 year period. And it is going to start with the rapture, which is the day of Christ. And then it is going to climax at the second coming. Sorry, climax is not a good word. Uh, it's going to be marked by another major event, which is the second coming. And this 1,000 year duration, is going. this 1,000 year period is going to end when heaven and earth passes away. So there are three markers. So the day of the Lord is going to be kicked off by the day of Christ, which is the day of the rapture. You get it? So that is the reason why the day of the Lord is being used in 1 Thessalonians 5. Now, if you go to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, which is the verse that everyone knows, that for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. Now, I want you to pay attention to the second half of this verse. And it says, like a woman in travail, they shall not escape. So there is a... And we know that when women go in, when women go into the labor, it is going to be a very short and intensely painful period, which is the beginning of Jacob's trouble. And then that is going to lead to the day of the Lord. So within the day of the Lord, which is a 1,000 year event, there are three markers, you understand? And the second marker is the day of the Lord, which is part of the day of the Lord. It is a day of the Lord within the day of the Lord. So it is a second event. In other words, it is the second event within the 1,000 year duration. So that is what that is why there is no contradiction when the day of the Lord is used in 1 Thessalonians 5 being a rapture passage. There is no contradiction at all because there are three markers. All right. So until and unless we know that, uh, so this is yet, yet another point to you know um, to remind us that. Whenever people start to use this verse and say that, wow, if the day of the Lord is the rapture, why would it be, uh, why would it be, why would it come as a thief in the night? Because the day of the Lord is actually the beginning of the 1,000 year day of the Lord with the second day of the Lord being the second coming. You guys get what I'm saying, right? Okay, so it's a 1,000 year duration. It's, it's a 1,000 year long period marked by number one, the rapture, which is called the, the beginning of the day of the Lord. And then there is the day of the Lord, which is the second coming, where it's uh, the dreadful day of the Lord, described by Prophet Joe, and it's all darkness and no light. And the third event that concludes it all would be the day that heaven and earth passes away. And we know that that will happen at the end of the 1,000 years, right? So that is the entire day of the Lord. Let, define, let, let Scripture define Scripture. 
a day to the Lord is a thousand years. So if it is a day to the Lord, it is the, the day of the Lord, right? That is how the Lord sees how long a day is going to be in His reckoning. All right. So just wanted to point that out so that you guys know for sure that we are not going to be here for the tribulation. So when someone actually uses, you know, the argument of the day... <laughs> sorry, sorry for that. Okay, so when, the next time someone uses the argument that, you know, while wow, the day of the Lord description is used in a rapture passage, that means that the rapture will happen at the end. No, it's not. All right? So if you can't remember what I said, please go through it again. But I think I made myself quite clear. All right, guys. I'll see you in my next video.